If you like quad tracking, stay tuned. I got a cool quick tip for you. So back in 2016, I was watching this making of video for some music. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But in that video, they were talking about how they recorded things to tape twice as fast and one octave up. And then they slowed the tape down to bring it back to pitch to give this cool effect. I thought that was really cool. And I was wondering, how would I do that digitally? Would I just do that and time stretch it? I did try that. Didn't work. Time, some time stretching things just have these weird artifacts to them. I'm going to show you the trick I came up with that's really cool. So I didn't want to do anything fancy for this. All I did was grab my guitar, go straight into my Mesa, and then mic it up right here with an i5. So for this tutorial, I wrote a new song. All I did was just doodle on the guitar, and double that, added some other instruments to it, and here is what I got. Let's go ahead and listen to it. So that's good enough for now. So that was just a normal mix. Actually, there's not really any mixing going on. I just basically set levels through a clipper on the drum shells and a limiter on uh, the overheads. Uh, all right, so I do have some roll off for that, but like in ge general, this isn't mix. It's just pretty much what you hear is what you get. Anyway, so we got a cool sound going on. But, you know, things sound a lot more interesting when you add in some guitar layers. So, here, let's just focus on this area right here for now. We've got this nice held section. Well, that was just hard panned. So now let me go ahead and add in the layers that I did, which is these tracks right here. That adds a lot of punch to it. I really like it. Makes things a lot more exciting. It introduces a little bit more dynamics to something that doesn't typically have dynamics. Especially with all that clipping and limiting going on. It's really nice. So, that's cool. But it could be cooler. The trick I came up with for this is to, yes, record things twice as fast and one octave up. But, the trick is to create a new session for that at double the sample rate at what your normal session is at. So I record at 44.1, so I created another session at 88.2. All I did was bounce the song down, speed it up 200%, and then convert it to 88.2. Then I added it into that 88.2 session, added a click track, and then recorded everything to that, but one octave up. Once you have your 88.2 tracks all edited and everything, then you bring it into your regular session, without converting it back to 44.1. That way, the 88.2 has to stretch itself to normal the normal length. So let's go take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and record this. All 
right, so that's not pretty as it is. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on this song because I'm just making it for the tutorial. So what I'm going to do to save time is I'm just going to do one more take for the other guitar. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit it to the grid. And then we'll go ahead and do our time stretching. All right, so the way I have things set up, it wouldn't let me capture or play back anything at 88.2. So I just brought it into the 44.1 session and con converted the files. So these are the edited tracks that I just did that are one octave up and double the speed. And here's what they sound like. So, we are not going to use these. I don't want these at all. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. So after you have your tracks that you recorded at double your sample rate, you want to go ahead and import them. Let's see here. Time Beef 88.2. Audio Files. And let's see here. Here are the ones. All right, so instead of hitting convert, we're just gonna hit add. Yeah, yeah, it's letting us know that it's not converting it, so it's gonna sound weird. And that's exactly what we want. New track. And now let's go ahead and give these a listen. Same files, just not converted from 88.2. Also, I do not want to hear the DI. You hear how it gets that nice chunky oomph? Kind of reminds me of the bass from Orion. Alright, so I just filmed this part, but I have to redo it because I forgot to have the panning set right. But I got the original double layered guitars here, and then I have our sample rate guitar layers here. Let's go ahead and compare them. We're going to start with the originals. Sounds pretty brutal. Now, let's add some oomph to that. you but I definitely prefer that. Now this trick is especially great for held chords. Here we got this little section. Yeah, so that is my guitar sample rate trick. So with all that done, let's go ahead and give it a listen.
of that. So in case YouTube is messing up the audio here, I'm going to go ahead and link below downloadable versions of these where you can hear the version without any doubles, with the regular doubles, and then with these scaled doubles. You can then judge for yourself if you think this technique is going to be worth it for you. One thing I want to note quick is that when you do this method, when if you are working with DIs and amp sims or you're going to reamp later, do all your reamping or commit your amp sims in your 88.2 session and then bring it in without converting it. Don't bring in your DI file and then reamp it or put an amp sim on it because that will add in a weird muddy mess. The amp won't react the same with a longer waveform as if you just put in the nice sharp pick a tech first and then stretched it out. It took a bit of trial and error for me to figure out the right way to do this. That's this week's video guys. If you give this a try, let me know what kind of results you get. To my knowledge, I haven't seen anyone else use it, so I'd be very curious to see what you can do with it. YouTube stuff is below. You guys know what to do with that. I'll see you next week.